morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today, my sisters, I am going to make for you uh, an instructional video about how a Christian woman can tie her headscarf. And I have many videos about the principles contained in the scripture and why Christian women cover their hair, and they cover all of it. But that, that is something I've covered in the times past. This particular video is an instructional video about how a, a godly woman would tie her headscarf. Many of you have asked me about this. And actually, in times past, before, uh, when, I, when I was first a Christian, the principle of Christian head covering was really not found on the internet very much. But now it is. And there are many erroneous ideas about how a Christian woman wears her veil on the internet these days. And so someone asked me about this today, and I thought, well, maybe it's time that I did make a public video about this. In times past, I've hesitated to do that because it's not about me, and I don't necessarily enjoy modeling things. Um, but I also understand that the sisters need to understand how how they can wear their headscarf and how to tie it. So this is what I'm doing today. Praise be to God. So as a Christian woman, we understand that we cover our glory because our glory is given to us for our husband. And it's part of the private relationship between a wife and her husband, just as the glory of the church is private between them and the Lord Jesus Christ. So we who are Christians, not everything that we do is public. For example, we pray in private. We pray in private. We don't stand on street corners so that we can be seen of men. We pray in private. Similarly, the glory of the woman, her hair, is given to her for her husband. And a woman should cover her hair in other situations when she's around other people. And this means covering entirely. So the first thing I'd like to point out is, as you can see here, I don't have little tendrils all framing my face so everybody knows the color and style of my hair, what it looks like. My hair in this video is completely covered because that is what we as Christian women do. I didn't always understand this. As a matter of fact, I think some of the very early videos from this channel, some of them might have part of my hair showing. But as I've grown in grace and knowledge of the truth of God's word, I've seen that, that what's pleasing unto the Lord is when we cover our glory. And cover means cover. It doesn't mean adorn. So a lot of people use the Christian head covering to adorn their hair. So they might wear a piece of lace, which actually draws more attention to the hair, just as a, a lace negligee calls more attention to a woman's sexuality. So that's not covering, that's adorning. A lot of people wear a head covering where, whereby the woman is not really being modest. And I'm going to go into this a little bit, but in part why I'm mentioning this is the Christian veil is different than what you will see in Muslim women, in Indian women, or Hindu women, pardon me, in Hindu women, or in Buddhist women, or in in the various other, you know, the, the false church, or in, even in the Jewish religion. The Christian attire and the headscarf is different. And the first thing that we can see is different is that the hair is completely covered. So, after we understand that, then I, I want to give you some understanding about how to make sure your hair is completely covered. So what I begin with every day in the morning when I arise is I, I brush my hair and I braid it. And I braid it into two braids, two long braids, and then I wind those brains, brains, <laughs> braids around my head. And then I secure those braids with a clip. So let me just show you what that clip looks like. So these are hair combs that, that can then be put into to the hair to secure the braids. But you don't have to use braids. Some people don't like that. So you can put your hair in a bun 
and secure that bun either with bobby pins or or with the combs that I just showed you. This is how we begin. Now in hot weather, and I get this question a lot, and since it's warm here, I'll, I'll make mention of this. When it's very hot outside, bef before I braid my hair and put it up, I wet it thoroughly so that that will help my head to be cool throughout the day so I can be both obedient and comfortable. So as you do these things, you will find ways to, to see to it that not only are you being obedient in, in this, but you're also comfortable and, and, and you can feel confident in, in your appearance as well as a Christian woman. So once I, I've put my hair up and in the summer I, I put it up and I wet it first and I secure it so that it's not going to fall out of, of the, the braids. For me, braiding is the most practical because of the type of hair, of hair I have. But, but you can do whatever you want, uh, and whatever works for you. Then I take a cotton triangle. This is a cotton triangle, much like you might get by folding a bandana in half. This is not a bandana folded in half. It's actually a triangle. But basically, I tie that around my head over my hair. In the winter, when it's very cold and I'm going to go outside, sometimes what I do is to put on a warm woman's beanie or a beret type hat underneath to, to see to it that I'll be warm. And obviously I would not have my hair be wet in the winter when going outside. Once that is done, so now we've reached the basic place where I'm at right now. What I have here is a square scarf. So this is a square as you can see, and I fold it into a triangle. And, and this is what I do. There are many ways that you, styles that a woman can wear, but um, many people ask about the style that I wear. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating for you here. So once it's folded into a triangle, then what I do is I, I tie it so that there is a little band in front so a little fold so I fold it and then I tie it around to one side like that so what you can see is that this is the basis for what I often wear in my videos and then you tie it once and then you just tie it again and that's known as a square knot and then what you have is a little bit of a um, what would you call this? A little bit of the scarf it is hanging down to one side. What we would do is we see that the back is um, covered, so your hair is completely covered, and this can be longer or shorter. But since the weather here today is hot, I'm making this video to demonstrate how we might wear our headscarf in the heat so as to be cool, because we wouldn't want a big heavy scarf clinging to our hot and sweaty neck. And the way that this is done is that the headscarf is hanging down, but it's not sticking to my neck, so it's cooler. Now, what I have here is a long rectangular band, and it's about, I would say it's about seven inches wide and maybe, I don't know, four feet long. But it doesn't have to be that long and it doesn't have to be that narrow. Basically, the reason why I, I use something like this is because I'm busy throughout the day and I don't want to have to put my hair up again and retie my headscarf. I like to do it once in the morning and have it last throughout the day. And so that's why I do it this way. The cotton triangle underneath is to secure the hair that's been put up. And then the, the bandana, or the, the this is the square scarf tried, tied into a triangle that's tied over that, is less likely to slip and the hair is less likely to fall out. So that method secures it. However, I have found that my hair tends to slip and slide throughout the day and the head scarf does also. So what I came up with is to take a, a long, narrow scarf like this and to fold it either into a wide band like that or into a narrow band 
And of course, you can have fun with the colors and, and, and the way that you you choose to, to tie your head scarf, scarf so that it's attractive. And there's nothing wrong with being pretty. The difference between sexy and pretty is obvious. We can be pretty and we can be modest at the same time. So there's no sin in wearing a pretty headscarf. And what I would say is that, that women are most vain about their hair. And we don't want to fall into vanity with our headscarf either. We don't want to, you know, wear silver and gold threads spun throughout it and so forth. But wearing pretty flowers or pretty colors is quite fine. And it's not being disobedient to do so. The principle of modesty regarding the veil is what we cover. What we cover is our glory, our hair. So then I fo have folded this into a narrow band. And what I do, because my hair is in a... Um, it's in a braid around my head. I tie the narrow band just in front of the narrow band, which the, the braid, which will hold the entire thing in place. And I tie it to the side, making sure that the part in the back is not caught up in the band. And then I, for this one, because this is longer, and they're not, I don't always wear a longer band, but this one is longer. And I chose it so I could show you this. I tie it into a bow. Now you can leave the bow so that it's on the side like this. But often what I will do is I'll pull it around so that the bow is in the back. And that gives a nice, um, it, it, it's a flattering look. And it also covers the back of the neck. But as you can probably see, it's not touching my neck. And so it's feminine. And it's also comfortable in heat. So what we want to understand is that we can work with, with what we're doing so that we can be comfortable and so that we don't look like women of other religions. One of the most frequent questions that I get is that I, if people say, I don't want to look like a Muslim. And, and I understand that. However, the first thing I would say is that, that the Muslims wear, often, they wear something that is known as a, um, oh, what's it called now? Hold on. I'm having one of those moments. Pardon me, the hijab. So the hijab is the style that looks something like, like this, usually. And the thing is that I want to point out about this is that as long as your hair is covered, you are not being disobedient. So I wear a hijab in the winter when it's cold because it's practical. It covers my neck and it's very warm. So it's not a sin to wear a hijab. It doesn't matter where you buy your veil or the belief system of the person that sold you your veil. But a lot of women don't want to look like a Muslim. And, and so for that reason, they ask me, how a Christian woman can tie her headscarf so as to not look like women of other religions. So what I wanted to address is how we might wear a hijab because we can get these headscarves online and they're very beautiful. And so I, if you don't want to look like a Muslim, you can still get a headscarf like that and just tie it differently. So for example, we might and I'm just going to leave on what I have on already, but you don't have to. So you, we might tie it like this and and um, just tie it in, in to the side and then maybe put part in the back and part in the front like that. And that's very modest and that is not the way that a Muslim woman would wear her veil. I hope that this has been helpful. And I also just want to say that a Christian's appearance, a Christian woman's appearance is different from a Muslim. It's different from a Jewish woman. It's different from the various women who wear a head covering. First of all, we don't wear eye makeup. And a lot of Muslim women do. The majority of them do. They also wear jewelry. Jewish women tend to wear a headscarf that is more like like this and they wear big earrings and makeup and sometimes their clothing is not particularly modest. 
A Christian woman dresses modestly, so she wears a long skirt or a long dress. She, she is not revealing parts of her body, such as her, her um, cleavage, or she's not wearing tight things. She's thoroughly covered. She's not wearing things that can be seen through. She is modest in her clothing. And this is very different. This will set you apart. Not wearing jewelry, not wearing makeup. And a lot of women try to kind of make up for wearing a headscarf by putting on big jewelry or, or intense makeup. And of course, this is not what we as a Christian woman would do. The, the Jewish style uh, of wearing a headscarf is often to have it kind of piled up high on the head, um, almost like a hat. And the thing about this that I would say is that if they, and Jewish women don't cover their hair with it in most cases. In most cases, their hair is still very much showing. So, of course, that's one way we would be set apart. But the other reason that I advise Christian women not to do that is because we don't want to look like the world. And in the world, women cut their hair short or they put it up so that their beautiful neckline can be emphasized, so that their makeup and jewelry can be emphasized. And when we wear a veil that hangs down as our hair does, this is more modest. When the hair is piled up high on the head or when a headscarf is piled up high on the head, that can be done to emphasize the grace of a woman's neck and her, her uh, cleavage or the jewelry she's wearing or the makeup that she's wearing. So it's, while it's not a sin to wear a head covering that is not hanging down as, as this one is, I still would recommend that for the most part, when in public, that that is what you wear so that people will know what it is that, that you're doing. You're being modest. Part of it is to be obedient that we cover our heads when we pray or prophesy. So Christians, all Christians, are commanded to be instant in prayer, to pray without ceasing. And so for the most part, our hair, our glory, is covered in order to honor our husband, Jesus Christ, and our Heavenly Father. But it's also worn to be modest. And, and a head covering can be worn in such a way as to be very immodest. As a matter of fact, I would say that someone who's wearing a head covering that is not covering their hair is actually drawing more attention to their hair. They are adorning their hair. We read in the scripture that a woman is to cover her, hair, her head when she prays or prophesies. We also read in the scripture that a woman's glory is for her husband. We understand then that to wear a head covering without covering is to actually adorn the hair. So head coverings that are made of lace only emphasize and draw attention to a woman's hair, much like a lace, a lace negligee will call attention to a woman's sexuality. So we don't wear the kind of veil that's made simply of lace with all our beautiful hair flowing out underneath. That is not covering. Cover means to cover. And so we cover our hair completely. When we want to, in, in the beginning, we sometimes feel uncomfortable wearing a veil and we realize that it will draw attention. And so we try to get around it some way by saying, well, could I wear a beanie instead? Or could I, you know, could I wear a style that is more like the, the Jewish head covering? And what I would say, or even just a simple bandana. What I would say about that is that we are set apart as Christians. We are modest in our apparel, and, and we don't mind looking different. We are, in fact, a peculiar people, and people should be able to tell by looking at us that we're different. So while we wouldn't want to look like a Muslim, we also don't want to look like a, the world. And wearing a head covering that is basically just a hat or a cap, or a bandana, that all of these things make us look like something other than a godly woman. It's less modest. So the back of your neck, when it's revealed, is attractive. However, 
if you're standing in front of a hot stove, as many of us do, or you're cleaning the house, you don't have to wear your best, most beautiful, long flowing veil when doing that. I have found, for example, that when I'm washing the bathtub, I don't want to be wearing a long veil because often it, it falls down into the, the water when I'm washing the bathtub. Similarly, when we're cooking, we wouldn't want anything to get blown into the fire or dangling over the fire. So sometimes it's wise to wear a simple bandana when doing that kind of work in the home. However, we would still want to be sure to cover all of our hair. I hope that I've clarified these things for you, that, that the Christian veil covers a woman as her hair would cover her. So as you can see, it covers the back of my neck. And we can tie it so that it's not sticking to the back of our neck. We can also do things to either stay warm or stay cool, depending on the weather. And we can dress in such a way as to to be modest, but not necessarily to be walking around in a sackcloth all day. And there are people who are kind of legalistic who will tell you that a woman can only wear a completely white veil or a completely black veil, as the Catholics do. And this is legalism. We read in Proverbs 31 that a virtuous woman maketh herself coverings of tapestry. And tapestry is beautiful. It's a pattern. Therefore, we can understand that wearing patterns or flowers is not a sin, and it's not a sin to wear purple or scarlet either, because we read in the same chapter of Proverbs 31 that a virtuous wo woman wears clothing of purple and scarlet. So it's not a sin to wear bright colors. It's not a sin to wear pretty patterns. It is, however, a sin to, to pray or prophesy with your hair uncovered, and all that do so dishonor God, and we don't want to dishonor God. I hope that this video has clarified for you about how a Christian woman can tie her veil, and I just want to remind you that if you want to wear a, a veil as, as the Muslims do, so like this, that's not a sin. It's not a sin. And it's not a sin to, to wear a bandana and have your, your, your veil be up when you're in a situation where a long flowing veil would be dangerous or it just wouldn't make sense. So obviously we want to be balanced in how we think about this. We don't want to become legalistic. And I would never tell a woman that she cannot wear her hair, her veil like this because it, it's correct. Her, her hair is covered, and that's what needs to be covered. All I'm saying here about that is it's less modest, and it, it can make people think you have cancer. It can make, make people think that you're Jewish, and verily, it's just not as modest, and we want to be careful about these things. So when I'm out uh, in the world, in general, I wear a style like this. I pray this message has been edifying for you, my sisters. Feel free to write to me if you have more questions. In the description box below, I will link the playlist on this channel about head covering for those of you who have questions about the doctrine of the veil and why Christian women wear a veil. May the word of the Lord go forth today so that many Christian women can be obedient in this very important scriptural principle. In Jesus' name, amen.